<laughs> you got a clock? <laughs> okay. Let's see, last, last year your presentation was, what, three hours? <laughs> 42 minutes. <laughs> I'm George Madsen. Uh, I, I honestly thought that I was talking for about 15 minutes last year, and, and uh, I ended up embellishing things or going on, on tangents, and I talked forever. It's a sign of highly efficient people when you, you misjudge time. Yeah, or something. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to say, okay, this is what I got, this is what I've been working on. You pretty much heard this stuff. Uh, I make these, I make that. Obviously, people are complaining because I don't honor 30-year warranties, but... 50-year <laughs> warranties. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. That would have made me five. <laughs> George, I already went to the bathroom, so take your time. This yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and John was complaining. Time. He said, next time, make sure I go pee before you talk. So. <laughs> anyway, I'm George Matson. I manufactured this. As, as Stephen said, it's a reiteration of this thing. This was the first key tar that came out. I came up with it in 1978. I started manufacturing it in 1980. I lost a lot of money on it, and uh, and went off doing other things for a while. But then, since Yamaha wasn't pumping out uh, DSP chips and uh, synthesizer chips anymore, and knocking us all out of business, and there's a nice little market, and I'm getting old, and I don't want to work hard, so so uh, I reinvented that into a modular format. And as you can see, uh, as James put it, uh, you not only have a modular, but, but even the case system is modular. So this thing can just keep expanding forever <coughs> until you either have to get a three-phase power run into your house to keep powering it up or run out of space, whichever is first. Uh, I do want to comment these little skulls. <laughs> And stuff. They are MIDI controlled, and, and Scott Rice over here at Division Six. He's my little brother. Uh, he designed my MIDI system for me, but he also designed this little tuning board for going in Game Boy Advances and stuff mm -hmm. called uh, Midify. And uh, literally, I mean, here's proof you can Midify, you know, MIDI control almost anything with these little boards. So it's it's really a cool device. Give him a hand for that. He does yeah. a lot of what I did want to bring up is, uh, if you notice, I have these cable caddies that I built. Is uh, I, I hate messing around with uh, patch cords, but with a modular, you need them. And so I built a little matching cabinet with uh, these racks in. This one's matrixes. This is my original prototype. But uh, what I did is, since I built the cabinets, I built Larry's. Uh, let's see. Else. I, I, I do woodworking and do all this stuff. I do a lot of stuff for Steven. But one of the things he did do, or I do, and Scott's using them for business card holder, but I took these little racks and I take my scrap wood and I build these cable racks that you can mount on your walls. You know, put double sided tape on them, stick it on the side of your monitor. But I use these real nice woods. And uh, Stephen owns Synthwood, and he sells these for me. And so, <coughs> and, how much? Uh, I'll talk Stephen. I know what I charge him. But uh, anyway, I have five different flavors here. I have uh, Purple Heart. I have Paduke, and this piece is actually a piece of Paduke that was left over when I built Ichabod for Billy Corgan. Uh, this is mahogany. This is the standard walnut. Got stuff out of here. And this is a real pretty piece of figured maple. I actually think it's a little piece left over from uh, Larry's case over there. But so it, it's, uh, they're not as cheap as those uh, stamped out Pomona racks, but they are pretty. They're all, they are high quality. Uh, I have put a real nice finish on them. I put a lot of tender love and care into them. So if anybody's interested in those, they can talk to Steven. How many people have modulars? Okay, with that show of hands, how many people use 3.5 millimeter patch cords? How many? <laughs> Good Lord. Um, Alex Isles of Ad Infinitum 
saw that picture of uh, Stephen in front of Ichabod when we were in Chicago at Billy Corgan's uh, with that main of patch cords, black patch cords, and he wrote to me and he says, man, he says, I've been there. You need colored patch cords. So he, he sent me some. I said, hey, that's cool. That's really nice of you. You have some business cards. I'll pass them out. And so what he sent me was a box of singly packed who else? <laughs> uh, patch cords. Oh, God, one for Lauren. Okay, the guy in the green. Let's see. Oops. Okay, the guy in the blue. Oh, lost it. Okay, not guy in the green. Okay, guy in the blue. Okay. I believe one for two. Lauren. I don't know if I can throw it that far. I'm getting old. <laughs> nice shot. Anyway, there's a few of them, but thanks to Alex Isles of Ad Infinitum. So there's my plug, but it was real nice of him to do this, but all you guys, trick or treat, here you go. Uh, I've got some freebie swag patch cords from Alex there, so if you guys need them, there they are. They're free, they're on the house. Uh, so, I'll <laughs> so it's always nice to be able to pass things out to people. You get something for coming here, that's, that's what the cost of admission covers. Um, what I've started doing, last year I wasn't quite through completing my system. We had Jim Patchell here. Uh, I finished my filter. He and I finally got it together. So just before December, I finally had the systems complete. We, uh, we got them shipped and then everything started going crazy. I started building more systems for people. Uh, so now I have a complete system. Uh, but what I did is because of Billy, I was able to order inventory. And so now I don't need to get 10 people to buy whole systems so I can afford to get the parts. So I am now selling internationally. I am now selling individual modules. And I also make custom cases. And I sell the cases separately. And I came up with uh, this horizontal version of the thing. So I have a horizontal version, it's not like the vertical format. You can tip it on its side and we have a different frame, we can actually mount stuff uh, horizontally. So if you want to go that route, you can too. So there's a lot of different iterations we can do, or I can do, uh, just based on what people want. And if you go to my website, which is mattsaminimodular.com, and there's a link to our wiki, wiki page, and we have a wiki page that lists all the modules, and I actually put the price list on the wiki page, <laughs> and uh, and uh, shows whether it's available or not. But I decided I wanted to bring this horizontal case, I figured well, I may as well fill it up. So one thing I did is uh, typically our MIDI acts as a power supply too, because uh, I needed a lot of space for power supply and most space for the MIDI, but I needed two panels, so the marriage of the two worked out because I needed very little panel space, but a lot of MIDI space for the panel, so so it worked out. I quit making the power supplies because there's just too much involved as well as getting electrical certification and all that stuff, so I use those stupid little, uh, yes, I hate to say it, wall wards to plug into the back, these things, and so what that left me with is somebody doesn't want a MIDI, they're going to need some sort of power entry thing, so I made this cheap little panel, I think I'm going to sell it for 50 bucks, all it is is uh, just a, basically a power switch, and uh, gives you a red and a blue LED so you can check your positive and negative power rails to make sure they're functioning, and so it just, basically it's a front panel control without having to flip your, your power strip or unplug it or plug it back in from the back, it's just a front panel control. Uh, that's working. This is my sequencer that everybody was talking about. This is just a filled panel. There's nothing in there. It's spread all over my uh, all over my breadboard at the moment. Um, I'm working on it, but it's a basically an eight by three <coughs> row uh, sequencer. It's two panel widths wide. And since I was building that, I decided I better make a quantizer too. This is an auto ranging quantizer. So I put out discrete semitones over a seven octave range. <laughs> Um, there's, a, there's a matrix here of 12 LEDs, so it'll tell you what semitone you're on. And uh, the root, the third, the fifth, and I don't remember what the last one is. Uh, number 12 is probably the octave. 
Anyway, I got red LEDs there and green on the rest because that way you can tell if you're playing intervals. Uh, just part of the light show, I guess, but it, it comes in for a handy visual reference. But to show you what rain 